Star Trek has, from time to time, produced episodes that are heartwarming and uplifting. There have been episodes that show the lighter side of the future, from friendships to love stories to even the bond between person and ship. This is not that list. Gene Roddenberry knew exactly what he was doing when he set out to create a show to tell morality plays on a weekly basis, reflecting the wrongs he saw in society back on the audience that was watching. For many, many years, Star Trek has never been afraid to tackle some of the deeper and darker aspects of the world around it. With that in mind, I'm Sean Ferrick from Trek Culture, and these are 10 Star Trek episodes that pissed people off. 10. Plato's Stepchildren the infamous kiss between Uhura and Kirk in Star Trek has long been a tentpole in the history of not only Star Trek, but in history in general. While the status of the episode containing the first interracial kiss on television has since been debated, even in Star Trek itself, with Kirk kissing Lieutenant Marlena Moreau in the second season episode Mirror Mirror, Moreau was played by Filipino actress Barbara Luna, the furore that preceded the filming of the kiss was in anticipation of the fallout from the conservative television stations, as the fear was that they would refuse to screen the kiss, and they were, in a way correct. The kiss has gone down in infamy, however, as Nichols reflected later, the taboo of the piece was greater than the fallout. While there was hate mail, it was nothing like the deluge that they've been expecting. Star Trek showed with that one moment of television that some taboos were ready to be challenged. 9. The High Ground the Star Trek The Next Generation episode The High Ground is frequently cited episode as one of the show's most controversial. The depiction of a terrorist group in a sympathetic light, something that DS9 would not shy away from with Major Kira, was somewhat shocking. However, the connection to a real-world events caused the real stir. The episode aired in early 1990, but was not screened on either BBC or RTE, the two national broadcasters. This is due to the reference of Irish reunification, which in 1990 was an idea so alien that the of the Good Friday peace agreement was still a decade away. To date, it has not been aired on RTE, as the memories of the Troubles are still fresh in the Irish psyche. Even the writers and producers on the show were not happy with the episode, with Ronald D. Moore, Michael Pillar and Brennan Braga all lamenting that it fell far short of the message they had hoped to put out, to paint a nuanced picture of terror groups and their methods. 8. Shades of Grey this episode angered people for the pure pointlessness of it. The episode was a casualty of the writer's strike in 1988, resulting in Star Trek The Next Generation's second season running short on episodes. The idea to create a clip show was conceived, which would work around a flimsy plot. While other series have managed to successfully include clip shows in their runs, Stargate SG-1 would be a good example of this, Shades of Grey absolutely missed the mark. Reviews of the episode range from they did the best they could with the strike to there's no excuse for how terrible it is. An unfortunate side effect of this episode was that they Diana Muldara's final appearance in Star Trek was in one of its worst ever entries. As Morris Hurley, outgoing producer, said of this episode, piece of sh**, terrible, just terrible. 7. Second Contact Star Trek Lower Decks has now hit the airwaves with their season opener Second Contact being the franchise's first half hour season premiere since Beyond the Furthest Star and it hit the ground running. It has proved to be like Marmite. Some people love it and some people hate it. Some of the loudest complaints state that the crew on board the USS Cerritos are simply not Starfleet and by virtue of the show being a Star Trek show, this fact is unforgivable. Reasons cited included Mariners drinking on the job and the slicing of Boimler's leg, the amount of censored swearing and the date that Rutherford shares with Barnes despite the zombie outbreak around them. It is certainly not everyone's cup of tea, but it announced what it was from the beginning and tonally has remained on point ever since. 6. Rejoined According to Ronald D. Moore, this episode received fierce backlash from conservative homes that felt angry that they haven't been given a warning that it would feature a homosexual kiss between two women. The political climate in 1995 still had a ways to go before it would be more inclusive of LGBTQIA issues, resulting in this episode receiving heavy criticism, despite the cast and crew's assertions that the episode was not about homosexuality at all. The taboo of the episode is that current hosts of former Trill lovers should not be allowed to rekindle a relationship to avoid creating a hierarchy of the species. Ira Stephen Bear commented that due to the number of complaints that the episode received, he was dismayed to find that there was still a large amount of conservatism in many of the fans of Star Trek at the time, something antithetical to the message behind Roddenberry's Star Trek. 5. Threshold Look, to be very honest, the angry fans kind of have a point here. Threshold is often considered among the worst episodes of Star Trek for several reasons. The apparent flying in the face of established rules, although this is not technically correct, as Roddenberry had originated the idea of Warp 10 would occupy every point in the universe back in the days of the next generation, and the episode's poor resolution make for an unenjoyable viewing experience. Brannon Braga, who wrote the episode, lamented that it is the episode he is most remembered for, despite having written well over 100 episodes of Star Trek. Kate Mulgrew spoke 
at a 2009 fan convention saying that she was most uncomfortable with this episode, particularly in mating with the lizard Tom Paris. Despite all of this, Robert Duncan McNeil enjoyed the episode, as it allowed him to expand his range as an actor. 4. These are the voyages. This episode has the merits of so bad it's good, but at the time of release, it was a serious misstep by the writers. Enterprise had been cancelled, but rather than let it end on its own merits, it was retroactively shoved into an episode of The Next Generation, which made no sense plot-wise and only served to end the show with a whimper. The episode faces the most criticism for where it lies in the franchise. It is the last episode of Enterprise. Showrunner Manny Cotto says that he saw the episode as a coda rather than a finale, with Terra Prime and Demons being the actual ending of the show. Jolene Blaylock called the episode appalling, while Dominic Keating truly enjoyed it. Marina Sirtis is somewhere in the middle, stating that she felt the episode was a good episode, but just not a good finale. 3. The Outcast this episode was Star Trek's attempt at taking on conversion therapy and addressing LGBTQIA issues, however, despite the best of intentions, the episode fell short of expectations. Rick Berman spoke about the reaction to this episode. He said that they received many letters from members of the LGBTQIA community who felt that this episode was a poor attempt of Star Trek washing its hands of the topic and that the episode was too oblique and didn't go far enough. Earlier in Star Trek's production history, David Gerald, writer of the Trouble with Tribbles had penned a script called Blood and Fire, which featured Star Trek's first openly gay character and was an attempt to discuss AIDS in Star Trek, the franchise's first attempt to deal with issues that had faced LGBTQIA people. The script, however, was continually rebuked and eventually shelved, although it would finally see the light of day as a produced episode of Star Trek New Voyages. 2. Dear Doctor Dear Doctor is one of the first great episodes in Enterprise. The Star Trek prequel series had struggled somewhat in its first year, relying on a standard that had worked for the next generation of Voyager, in that the episodes were all standalone and often toothless. Dear Doctor was a step away from this, while still remaining standalone. The episode is the first tease of the Prime Directive. The structure of the episode is quite like Data's Day, in which much of the story is told in voiceover, from Dr. Phlox's point of view. The ship encounters a world with two alien races, one of which is reaching the end of its genetic life. While Phlox discovers a way to change this, Archer decides to withhold this information, as it would interrupt the natural flow of evolution on the planet. The episode generated a lot of controversy in the decision to let evolution play its part. The episode was also accused of okaying genocide, simply to avoid breaking the rules. This seems something closer to personal taste, while technically there was no Prime Directive, so... Up to you? Number 1. Stardust City Rag this was the episode that generated the most controversy in Star Trek Picard. The opening scene of the episode, Seven of Nine attempts to save Ichab from torture and death. The scene involves one of the most graphic scenes in Star Trek's history as his eye is torn from its socket. Star Trek has for years shown things like the vaporization of people, the destruction of entire starships and cities, along with knifings, beatings, and memorably in chain of command, brutal physical and psychological torture. So what was wrong with this episode? It came out of nowhere in the cold open of the episode. Echeb, a legacy character, though portrayed by a different actor, is killed in horrible fashion so that the episode can set up Seven's journey, a journey which culminates in her killing another in cold blood. Whatever side of this debate you come down on, it was a truly shocking opening to an episode, along with a disturbing finish. It is one of the most polarizing episodes of all of Star Trek since Picard began airing and, like all good Trek, it is generating discussion. And there you have it, that's our list of the 10 episodes of Star Trek that pissed people off. Let us know what you thought in the comments below, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can catch me over on Twitter, at Sean Ferrick. In the meantime, live long and prosper, and stay classy.